In order to start tufting, you need these tools. So I'll tell you the list right now. Now this is the primary tool you're gonna need in order to start this entire journey. There are many tufting guns out there, but this is the one I bought from Amazon, and it's worked perfectly throughout this entire time. So if you're in need of one, I have the link in the description. Next thing you'll need is fabric, primarily monk's cloth. Then you'll need backing fabric. I started with felt, but I later switched to anti-slip. That provides a more premium and professional feel to the rug. Next will be yarn. Only pick the colors that you need, because believe me, you will have tons of yarn once you begin. And let's not forget the frame. Make sure it's completely sturdy and it's ready to be used. Whether it's custom or pre-made, make sure everything's on there tight and securely. The last thing you want is an unsecure and swaying frame. Of course, we can't forget glue. Throughout this video, you'll see me use three different types of glue to finish the rug. Finally, I use scissors and shears to detail and shape. And if you guys need a more in-depth description about these tufting items, I have a video for that look at the top right. To start, you're gonna need to apply the fabric to the frame, but there is a couple of steps to this, so follow with me. First, to know that you're applying it correctly, there will be lines that go vertically and horizontally. Now, once you've applied it to the frame, there's one more step. What you wanna do is carefully grab each end of the frame and pull as hard as possible, making sure that the fabric is extremely tight on the frame. Once you've done that, you can do the tufter's test. What you wanna do is flick the fabric as hard as possible. Now, if the fabric is soft, that means that you've applied it incorrectly. But if the fabric bounces back very quick, you know you've done it. Now once you're ready to start tufting, take out your projector and set it up a good length away from your frame. Also, try not to overcomplicate picking an image. You can always look on Google or design something yourself. Once you have the photo, put it onto your computer and start projecting. Now flip the photo as well. You can do that in any type of software, even preview if you have a MacBook. Sometimes you can't get the projector in the perfect spot. Remember, you can always move the image around on your computer as well. Now you're ready to trace. You want to outline each color of your design. Try and get as close as possible so it's a perfect outline. Once everything's outlined on your fabric, you want to label each color as well. Believe me, you don't want to be confused when you're inserting the yarn. Now for the tufting gun, there's things that you need to be aware of. Cleaning the tufting gun is really important, otherwise anyone that you buy at any price will break sooner than later. So I'm going to show you how to clean it, take care of it, and the settings that I use for my gun. Before I show you how to clean it, please turn off your gun. Flip the switch down and make sure that any bright light on the gun is completely turned off. Now I use a microfiber cloth and a brush. I only use the brush if there's a little bit of yarn left on the gun. So here you'll see me brushing off the important parts of the gun and if there's a small space that you can't get to you can always twist the gear and that will allow you to get more space. After this I'll lightly oil the gun and then turn it on for around 30 seconds. Now if you see a black residue or a black gunk on the gun then turn off the gun take your microfiber cloth and clean off that residue. Once again you can spin the gear to get those tight spaces and once it's cleaned I lightly oil it and then turn it on. Now for the settings this is an industrial tool so please be careful with this. There's a non located at the bottom of the gun there's a little white line I try to keep that close to the lowest factory setting now of course you can turn this up higher which means the gun will be tufting at a higher rate of speed so this is important to know for the next step this can lead to more problems like cutting the fabric and potentially just ruining your rug a slower speed allows you to get more detail and altogether just a better rug and at the same time if you're watching this video I'm guessing you're a beginner which starting at a slower speed will definitely help you so much now for those that don't know the tufting gun guides you in an upward position. Let the gun guide you. The only time I guide the gun is if there's a curve or I have to go diagonal, mostly just for making shapes. Now for the part everyone's been waiting for. If you get red heart yarn like I do, you can either take the strand from the outside or the inside, though I definitely recommend taking it from the inside because eventually it can become tangled if you take it from the outside strand. Assuming you already have the yarn looped through the frame like so, take your gun and thread the yarn through like this. leave a little bit of yarn hanging off the end. When tufting designs, I normally outline the rug first and then fill it in. When threading the border, I normally do three lines thick, but if your design doesn't require an outline, that's okay too. Normally, you're gonna wanna use the gun vertically. Sometimes it may require you to go horizontally or diagonal. I like to outline each separate color and then I fill it in vertically and make sure that the yarn is fully embedded in the fabric. Also, watch how close my lines are. This is normally how close you want them.
Applying the same amount of pressure all the way through creating the rug is definitely important. Now you see this little thing? Hold on, hold on. Let me get a little closer. You see this? I don't cut these anymore. I pull them out. The reason you don't cut them is because one, that can lead to cutting your rug. And the most important reason why is because they don't actually stick into the rug itself. Though if you do end up ripping your fabric, there is a fix to that. But since I didn't rip my fabric, I didn't want to just rip it to fix it. So if you guys really want that video, please spam it in the comment section. Now that you filled in your design you want to glue it. For this I'm using Roberts 3000 carpet glue. Now it doesn't really matter what type of flooring you have, protect your floor from this glue. I have carpet and it can absolutely destroy it so I bought super cheap gym mats set on the floor underneath. There's an important reason why I use this glue and that will come into the video later as well. You can either put a glove on or get a little spatula. Make sure that there's barely any clumps and leave everything even. Make sure you do this step within a ventilated area. You don't want to inhale fumes all day. Now you wait 12 to 48 hours for the glue to dry. Once it's finished, you can cut the rug out. Just make sure that you leave a little bit of excess fabric so you can fold it over on the second gluing step. Now I lay it flat down on a table and I cut little pieces all the way around the rug. The point of doing this is to fold them inward into the rug. Now feel if the glue is still kind of tacky on the back side of the rug and if it is now you can fold in each piece that you cut. From here I take hot glue and spray adhesive glue and apply the backing on. The way that I prefer to apply it is by doing it little by little otherwise the hot glue dries way too fast and you really don't want that. Something to remember when you are applying the glue, make sure that you apply pressure on the entire rug each time you apply glue. Now I cut off the excess backing fabric and as you can tell everything's starting to come together. Now it's time to shave the rug. I like to use my big shears which are called beach rows. If you guys do decide to buy this shear, it does not come with the guide that I have on mine. I made that separately on my own. And that little white piece that I have on that as well, I have a whole video explaining what that is and how I created that and now I have a 3D printer to produce them. It allows a vacuum to be attached to the guide itself. So it makes cleanup time way faster and it stops the shear from overheating. Now now the reason why I have a guide on it is so it makes a clean glide across the entire rug. Inconsistencies in the rug will definitely make it not feel professional whatsoever. And a lot of the time with a mess up like that you can't really get your work back. Once that's done I use scissors to detail the rest of the rug. I glide my scissors through the colors to separate them. Then I go through a second time and cut the fabric. I do this on a very slight angle so the definition is more prominent. Or tilt your longer scissors up a little bit. For me that works but for some people it may not. Now that everything's detailed, I vacuum the rug and make sure that there's no lint on the back and front. You can also go over the rug with a lint remover. Now that you're almost done, flip the rug upside down and slap your label on it. I make sure people know it's a one of one rug and if they decide to scan the code, they get all of my info. Congratulations, you tufted your first rug. Now you might wanna learn how to price that rug, so watch that video here.